Central Asian Report is a program about the ongoing geopolitical trends and the panorama of the present-day realities in Central Asia. Politics, economics and culture, events, trends and people. All this on one territory. Hello, you're watching the Central Asian Report in today's program. The shift to Asia. The German economy searching for new places to grow. Interesting labor unions, becoming popular among youth and ready for new challenges. Innovation through empathy. A Tajik company has developed a great range of products for people with special needs. The great city of the Great Kanat, Saraychik, contemporary place of the establishment of Kazakhstan's statehood. Today, United Europe is undergoing not the best of economic times. The old world almost has nowhere to grow on its own territory. That is why the biggest European economies are more often than not turning to Central Asia as an important vector of diversification. Our correspondent brings the story of how German businesses are establishing this strategy in the region. Today, in terms of Kazakhstan's positioning, massive tectonic shifts are occurring. Many Western analysts think that the country, with its favorable conditions and convenient logistics, is becoming the most advantageous entry point to the markets of the Eurasian continent. Kazakhstan's active participation in the Eurasian Economic Union, a multimodal project, New Silk Road, and the Transnational Corridor, Western China, Western Europe, all contribute to this. I think it will uh, change Kazakhstan and the transport logistic in Eurasia in a fundamental way. The shift of the center of the economy to Asia, formation of new centers for growth on the Eurasian continent, permanent improvement in the business climate of Kazakhstan all attract Western investors, including German investors. As I visited this afternoon um, an information session which was done by the uh, Kazakh uh, government uh, showing what kind of uh, let's say benefits are provided to investors coming here. So I think this is overall a very good climate. On the other hand, a legislative base is being prepared in Europe to take cooperation with Kazakhstan to a new level. This entails the upcoming signing of the agreement on expanded partnership and cooperation of Kazakhstan and the EU. And at the moment, a tricky situation has arisen. The European Union's share in Kazakhstan's trade turnover is almost 50% and 60% in direct foreign investments. The trio of the biggest EU partner countries, according to the 2014 results, are Italy, Netherlands and France. The presence of German business in Kazakhstan, the biggest player in the European market, is quite modest. Last year's trade turnover between the countries amounted to 6 billion euro. Kazakhstan is much more exporting to Germany than Germany is exporting to Kazakhstan, which is unusual. However, this state of affairs under the conditions of Kazakhstan's accession to the WTO may change. Besides, for Western Europe, Kazakhstan is a stable platform for the expansion of trade and economic relations with other countries of Central Asia. Today, the common European economy is living through not the best of times. There are many reasons for this, including the dead burden of EU countries such as Greece, Spain and Portugal. That is why the German focus on Eurasia is completely understandable. Uh, I think these factories here also deliver your vehicles, for example, to Azerbaijan as the next step, and also to, uh, to Uzbekistan and so on. In order to find its own place in the new architecture of the world economy, German business, one way or another, will have to change its vector towards developing markets. And Kazakhstan may become a key link in such plans. Can labor unions free themselves of the Soviet bureaucratic heritage and become interesting to youth? According to experts, it is precisely young specialists who will lead the revival of labor unions in the fast-growing Central Asia.
In Central Asia, labor unions are often associated with a huge bureaucratic apparatus of the Soviet Union times. However, international experience shows that the institution of labor unions today can become a true guarantor of observance of human rights. Let's take a look at the history of Western Europe, Japan, at countries that have strong labor unions and where workers participate in the solution of daily social, labor and economic issues. This participation presumes appearance of active and engaged players on the dialogue arena who are ready to defend their labor rights in various sectors. Labor unions of Central Asia relegate this role particularly to the youth because the populations in the countries are quite young. More than half of the active population are young people between the ages of 18 to 37. In relation to the population, this is 30 percent, or one and a half million people. This is precisely the youth. They are the ones carrying the burden. Today's Kazakhstan's labor unions have approximately 730,000 young members. This is a relatively high figure considering the incredible 10-year drop in labor union activity due to the spread of informal employment. The same situation is seen in Uzbekistan, but in other countries of Central Asia, the number of young labor union members is still quite low. That is precisely why the labor union youth in the region has to get activated. It should be a young person explaining to young people that a labor union is an organization when there are young people and that it is for youth as well. This is the task of the labor union youth. According to experts, young workers can infuse new blood into labor union activities. Each young person can take part in labor union activities, can affect change within the labor union so that it is aligned with those principles and interests shared by this particular young person. Today the labor unions of Central Asia are facing global challenges of maintaining workplaces and protection of the rights of workers who are the first to feel the challenges of changing times related to crisis phenomena. In order to do this, first of all, labor unions of the regions need to be modernized expansion of responsibilities and a timely response to modernity. Only a person with disabilities understands the pain of a person in a similar predicament. The simple truth was taken as the foundation by one Tajik company. Its main line of work, production of products for people with special needs. Many of its employees are people with disabilities. Dilshod is the only organization in the country that produces this line of products and it eagerly shares its experience with colleagues from Central Asia. Our correspondent brings us the story. an enterprise specializing in the production of wheelchairs in the Vakshu region. This is the only enterprise in Tajikistan which offers products and services to people with disabilities. Dilshot produces more than 20 items of equipment and devices. It is interesting that some of the company's employees are persons with disabilities and therefore truly understand their responsibility and the challenges faced by their clients. The overall number of employees here is 10, and six of them live with disabilities. We take their perspective into consideration when designing our products. We try to make sure that the quality of our products is of a superb level so that people are satisfied with our products. The very first wheelchair was designed for Dilshad Muminov who as a result of cerebral palsy suffered from the paralysis of both of his legs. Back in 2000, the head of the enterprise, Sadullah Fakerov, made a model design of the wheelchair from his own drawings and thus helped Dilshot. My son was three when he got paralyzed. The first wheelchair that Dilshot received did not fit the standards. Wheelchairs and other equipment for people with disabilities are produced at the Dilshot Enterprise using original technology and only local materials, which significantly reduces their costs. And they are also very easy to use. We measure the bodily parameters of our client so that they can sit and rest comfortably. Tajik specialists are not only providing for the needs of those who require specialized equipment in Tajikistan, but also share their experience with companies in Kazakhstan.
to a Kazakhstan Moro Takinkadan. We were invited to Kazakhstan. In a period of one month, we set up a shop for the production of wheelchairs. We trained two specialists and produced a trial line of products. The production capacity of the plant is up to 200 units per year, which can cover the needs of all the rehabilitation centers in Tajikistan. At the show, it is understood that it is necessary to love your clients and make good quality products for them. These things go hand in hand, and the simple truth is priceless. A city that is a legend, a fairy tale. According to witness accounts of our contemporaries, the ancient city of Saraychik was not just the largest city of Central Asia in the beginning of the 16th century, but also a settlement of the Kazakhanat with a rich political and economic life. Saraychik, in the time of its rise, was the largest juncture of the Great Silk Road. The city was characterized by wonderful architecture and developed urban livelihood. Our correspondent delved in depth into the fascinating history of the ancient capital. In 1334, an Arab traveler, Ibn Battuta, visited the famous Turk city for the first time. He wrote down his impressions in the notes titled Desht Kipchak, I have traveled the entire world. It turns out that Saraychik is the largest city after Baghdad. Here the settlement of the Khanat is located. Four mosques shine bright with their beauty and there's a multitude of hostels. This is the first written account of the Saraychik city, which a century and a half later became the capital of the Kazakh Khanat. Saraychik played an important role during the period of establishment of Kazakh statehood. Under Qasim Khan, who ruled from 1511, Saraychik was a settlement in the Kazakh Khanat. Why Saraychik? Because it was an important checkpoint along the Great Silk Road. Convenient and strategic location, which connected the east with the west, resulted in Saraychik becoming a center of political, military and trade life of the Kazakh Khanat. Day and night, endless caravans arrived in the city. Then they moved further up north, along the Ural River and the bank of the Caspian Sea, to the city of Hajitarhan and Crimea, later on to Iran and Azerbaijan. The part of the road from Saraychik to Rugenc was under Saraychik administration. Therefore, the troops guaranteed the safety of the caravans. Overall, this road was very famous. There were wells with fresh water, caravans arise. Today, in the place of the city, a historical memorial complex is located, Kanat settlement, Saraychik. Pantheons of the Han are located here as well. Each one of them has eight sides that reach 70 meters in height. Between the walls, there is a monument to the seven Hans buried in Saraychik. Excavations are still being continued in the city. During these excavations, various items are discovered, plates, ceramics, coins, and various bronze items. And through these items, we can study the history of the city. For example, here is a silicon bowl that was found. It is the high quality of Chinese porcelain. It was brought from China. In 5080, the rich city of Saraychik, which was of great significance to the Kazakhanat, was looted and destroyed to the ground by troops from Astrakhan. But despite this, many priceless monuments of the ancient time, which are evidence of this city and the Kazakhanat overall, have been preserved to this day. You are watching the Central Asian Report. Until next time on Kazakh TV.